1945, nuclear power was used as a weapon for the first time when the United States bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, ending the Second World War. Since then, hundreds of nuclear bombs testing have been experienced by nine different states in the world. If a nuclear war had to happen, chances are that it would signify the end of humanity. And yet, nuclear weapons are still considered fair game in 2014. The nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima was about 20 kilotons. In 1961, the Soviet Union tested the largest nuclear weapon ever at 57 megatons. Now let me tell you what the effects of a 20 megaton bomb would have on a high populated city such as New York. What would happen is, within the reach of 4 miles, winds would reach 600 miles per hour, underground shelters will collapse, and everything would be destroyed. Within the reach of 16 miles, anything that could take on fire would, meaning oil, gasoline, wood, paper, hundreds of thousands of fires would be created forming a giant firestorm within half an hour. Within the reach of 32 miles, so almost all Manhattan, there would be no more oxygen. The temperature would reach 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything that lives would die. Millions of people would die instantly and millions of others would eventually die because the medical assistance needed would be in existence. Hospitals would be destroyed, the doctors would be dead, and there will not be any electricity. In 2003, a study published showed that if Russia were to use only 300 out of its 10,000 plus nuclear weapons as against largest city in America, between 75 and 100 million of people would die within the first 30 minutes. In addition to these direct deaths, all economic infrastructures including transportation, communication, public health would be gone. The remaining population would lack what it needs to survive and within a month pretty much the entire American people would have disappeared. People would die from starvation, exposure, epidemic disease, and radiation. Now, on a smaller scale, if a nuclear war had to happen between India and Pakistan, between 20 and 30 million of people would die within the first few weeks. We are assuming that 50 Hiroshima-sized bombs, which is 25% of what they possess, would be used. Not only is the number of direct deaths pretty high, but the impact on the environment would be terrible. Five million tons of debris would block out sunlight, which would lower the average temperature by 1.3 degrees Celsius. The decrease of the average temperature would do three things. It would cause a shortening of the seasons. It would cut down rain, and it would disrupt food production. The corn production in the U.S. would go down by 12% for over a decade, and so would the production of rice by 15% in China. The consequence to that, 1 billion people would be at risk of starvation. If the bomb on New York City that we talked about were to happen, 150 million of debris would block out sun sunlight. The average temperature would drop by 8 degrees Celsius and by 30 in the city. This is as low as the last ice age on Earth. Now, what about the possibilities that those scary scenarios happen? Well, listen to this. On November 19, 1980,
Captains Winstead and Musley were going through a normal missile launching drill at McConnell, her Air Force Base in Kansas, when strange things started happening. They said, We had a green light on the butterfly valve lock control that was not supposed to have a light at all. Instead of giving us the lights that said that this has be had begun, it said launch OK and launch sequence go, which means you're actually in the launch sequence. In desperation, Winstead shut the missile down by pulling the plug. They said that they couldn't know for sure if the missile would have fit Soviet Union, but they said it probably would have gone north. The example sounds pretty uncommon, but in fact, it is only one out of the five times that an accidental war has been avoided between America and Russia since 1979. There always were tensions between those two countries. And who knows how it would turn out if America decides that to intervene more in what is currently happening in Crimea. Recently, the U.S. has been in favor of developing a new nuclear weapon that would not that would appear not to be for purpose of defense, but more for attack. And what to think of the Middle East, knowing that Israel, Pakistan, and India all own some nuclear weapons too? And what about the relationship between North Korea and the rest of the world? The country that withdrew itself from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 2003 after being called part of the Axis of Evil by President Bush. The answer is, a nuclear war is a real thing, and it would basically mean the end of humanity. Nah, that is something that the world is aware of, and therefore, some things have been tried. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was ratified in 1975, and it aims to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. 187 countries ratified it, but to others, this treaty was to prevent new members from joining the nuclear club. India and Pakistan didn't sign it and went nuclear in 1998. The Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty was ratified in 1972, forbidding countries to build any sort of defense against missile so that every country is defenseless. The US has withdrawn from this treaty a few years ago. Controversial actions from more powerful states are pushing smaller ones to consider some military options as well. They don't want themselves don't want to put themselves into vulnerable positions by not having nuclear weapons. So that is why more and more countries are turning to nu nuclear. The world we live in is not safe anymore. Some people have understood it, but too many haven't. Red Cross has started a movement. The International Physicians for Prevention of Nuclear War received the 1985 Nobel Peace Prize. The PSR, Physicians for Social Responsibility, teaches leaders about medical consequences, consequences of nuclear weapons, and 34 nations have already released a joint statement for abolition. Some people have understood the importance of, of the issue, but we are not quite there yet. Much is still to be done. So what can you do? Make a phone call. Write a letter. Organize a movement. One well-written letter to a newspaper can have a huge impact in raising an issue or voicing policy recommendation. I have discovered a group that is called the Union of Concert Scientists. This, their site is explaining numerous issues and people can join and donate. They give the opportunity to people to take actions. Recently, thousands of phone calls from UCS reporters 
led to approval of the New START agreement, which cuts U.S. and Russian amount of nuclear weapons. So my message is, together, we can make a difference. Let's refuse that weapons could blow our world up. Let's refuse that million tons of debris could block out that beautiful sunrise on Palm Fred. So I'm asking from you to stay informed, to get in touch, and to join in. Thank you.